What's up, YouTube? I'm back. And this is my third attempt. Three attempts because phone calls kept coming in. So I'm telling you, anybody calls me while I'm recording this video, I ain't answering it. Sorry. It's gonna have to wait. Okay. So as many of you know, my sister is pregnant. She signed over custody to me and my husband. She's about six or eight weeks pregnant. Because we knew that Children's Aid was not going to let her be a mom. Because of her reasons and, and whatnot. So, Children's Aid became involved. And that's fine. You know, sometimes they do good things. You know, sometimes they get your kid into dance for less. Let me tell you about my experience. So Children's Aid is saying that my sister cannot be a mother and that they want the baby to be in the family and that they want her to have access. I want to do a relative adoption. For those of you who don't know what relative adoption is, it's actually our, our Ontario laws. You don't need a home study. You don't need an adoption certificate because you're family. So that's what I want to do. Not that I'm worried about a home study. If you really want, I can take you on a tour of my house right now. I really don't care. That's not my problem. My problem is, is you're making us jump through unnecessary hoops and making my sister go to the hospital because she's bleeding. Now, me and my husband did back out once because say I became involved and I really didn't know if I wanted to dip my toe back into that pool. Cause I did have a case with children's aid when my children were little, my kids have never been apprehended from me. They've never been placed out of my care, voluntary or involuntary. So my question really is, is like, you couldn't win against me back then. What makes you think you can win against me now? I'm not 16. I can't be bullied. I'm 30. I have two preteens and a teenager. Trust me. Anything you throw at me <laughs> looks like a walk in the park with bunnies. So this is what I have for the baby, okay? There's clothes in her dresser. And there's her car seat and stroller and high chair. And I keep referring to her as the baby. Her name is Cheyenne. She might be my niece. But in my heart, she's my daughter. And it's getting really stressful. It's getting really stressful to talk to my sister, to, you know, hear her so upset because there's no plan for the baby because Sayas is making it so impossible. It's really hard to, to jump through these hoops and these hoops take forever and them think it's okay. I run a normal household. As normal as normal can be. Every sibling fights. You can't stop that. It's just how it happens. So to say that you have concerns because me and my sister fight. Get over it. Is your relationship perfect? Is your house perfect? No, I didn't think so. But you try and pass judgment on others. This is the problem with say yes. Is I think they have a quota. Kind of like the police, right? Like they got to pull so many people over, you know, give them a ticket to meet their quota. It's like Sayas has to take so many babies to meet their quota. Here's my other problem. You're making me jump through hoops. Get fingerprints done and everything else to make sure I'm not a sex offender. I have three children. If anybody touched my children like that. Ugh. I can't even go there. Because I will lose it. Anyways. I have to jump through all these hoops. Yet... I had a friend grow up in foster care. I heard the horror stories of how he was raped, of how he was beaten. Yeah, you did your job real well. So, like I was saying, I run a normal household, you know. I live in a house like everybody else. Again, I live with a teenager and two preteens. I, look, I have not 
done dishes since last night. Okay. I got dishes and my house is clean though. But yeah, I got dishes in my sink like a normal person. Oh, oh. Would you look at that? There's Ditto, our family dog. Look at how cute he is. Ditto. Yes, I know I see you, pretty boy. You want to give hugs? Ditto is an eight-month-old. Black lap. Pretty big for eight months old. But he's our family pet. Just like a normal house has. You know, I got a hallway and I got a bathroom and I got a living room and I got a kid on a cell phone. I got a kid on a cell phone who's also on a PS4 on a flat screen TV sitting there you know oh, I also have other pets you want to see my fish here are my fish oh that's right here's Cheyenne's bassinet that's her bassinet for when I'm in the living room or whatever and she needs to sleep because guess what I've done the baby stage three times oh look here's her first box of diapers so I have an upstairs to my house too, but my other children are up there and doing whatever it is that they're doing, you know, on their flat screen TVs and whatever else and PS4s. So, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. Because this is another part of, of the home studies, okay? Because I looked it up. I'm not stupid. I go to lawyers and everything else. I looked it up. So home studies and check your cupboards. Okay, here are my cupboards. Now, you can see my cupboards. This stuff all comes out, and behind it is other crap. Do you see that? Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, that just happened. Okay, so on top of that, okay, here's my kids' juice boxes for school, and oh look, here's all of our, you know, well, I use vinegar to clean, so I got a lot of vinegar. Oh, here's my kid's school snack cupboard, you know, because they need school snacks to go to school. You know, here's my kid's snack cupboard. This is just their snack cupboard for at home, okay? Okay. So, not done. Not done. We come to my fridge and my freezer. This is my freezer. Okay. That's my freezer. This is my fridge. Do you see that jam packed? Do you see the blueberries? Do you see the strawberries? You see all my cucumbers and carrots? Yeah. That's right. That's not, I, I'm not even done yet. Want to see my baking cupboard? Oh God, stuff's trying to fall out. This is my baking cupboard. Cause I bake all the time. Okay. Not only that, hold on. There's an underneath to my baking cupboard. Look, check that out. Look at all that. Yeah, that's all my baking crap. Not even done, not even done. Here we go, through my lovely entranceway and into my laundry room that I keep my laundry in. <laughs> and my deep freezer, of course, of course. Hold on, I gotta take a laundry basket off of it. Be right back. Oh. That's a big laundry basket. Did I really? Okay. Now we're into my deep freezer, okay? So at first, you guys see my deep freezer? Do you see my deep freezer? Okay. And. Oh my gosh, my kids have all the junky stuff on top, of course. <laughs> it's like it's down there or not. Oh. It's probably underneath. It is. For crying out loud. Here are my big tub ice cream. If you can see under there, there's all the meats. See that bag right there? Yeah. So. 
not only have I provided basic needs for my kids, because let me tell you something, my kids all own a dresser, and they got like three baskets beside their dresser for their clothes. My kids shower every other day, unless it's summertime, and they're well fed. Not only that, we got a pool in our backyard. We've got it all. Not only have I provided the basic needs to having children, I've gone above and beyond for my children because they're just that, my children. Again, Cheyenne isn't even here. I can't tell you how big she's going to be. We're actually afraid she might be smaller than like, you know, zero to three months. So not only do I have preemie clothes, but I have preemie zero to three months and all the way up because, well, I'm prepared along with her bed and her bedding and her stroller and everything else. I'm well prepared. But yet, I'm still forced to jump through hoops. I'm still forced to do all these things that I don't need to do. A relative adoption is so easy and it makes everything that Sayas wanted possible. But they're still fighting me on it. Now, with my sister bleeding and everything because of the unnecessary stress, it's looking more and more or less like a custody battle. And it's turning in more and more to a lawsuit. I've done a complaint. I am doing a formal complaint. I have been to the MPP. So now... I'm going to give it a few days and see what the MPP does. Because if the MPP can't do anything or don't do anything, then I guess it's court papers. And I'm going to have to stand in front of a judge. Which is okay with me. But I will be posting more with more updates. And I will be letting everybody know how it all turns out. And everybody will meet baby Cheyenne, who has been fought for and fought for. And I have all the text messaging. I have all the screenshots. I have it all of all the bullying, all the unnecessary drama. I had the SAS worker tell me that me going down to Barry is just wasting gas. I don't know how everybody else's organization works, but I do know the laws of Ontario. And I do know that the laws change when you go to Quebec or Manitoba or, you know, outside of Ontario. I also know that my mother is itching to take a trip. Like, just itching. Like, the second week of July. You know? The weather's nice. You know, Manitoba just might look good. Either way, come hell or high water... That baby's mine. That is my daughter. And I will be raising her. It doesn't matter how many obstacles or hoops are put up. I will overcome each and every single one of them. Just like I did with my children. The only difference is. Who's going to have a job at the end of it. Because now. Not only have you gone and you've stressed my sister. And you've put an unnecessary weight on our family. <laughs> you have made it. So that. Now we feel like we're backed into a corner. You want us to work with you. You want us to do. Whatever you say. It doesn't work like that. And I get it. You're a children's aid worker. You're thinking you're all high and mighty. Guess what? There's only one God I pray to and it sure as hell ain't you. So when I'm praying at night, it's not normal prayers. It's praying that God have mercy on your soul when you get there for all the hell that you have put people through. I'll be back in a few days with an update. Share.
my video, make it viral. Because everybody out there who's battling children's aid right now, don't be afraid. And don't feel like you're backed into a corner. Because you have more rights than you know.